our RV came with a freestanding table and chairs, which is great for dining. However, having a place to work with computers, laptops, etc., it's not very conducive to a functional environment. So we're going to take this out and replace it with something new. I'm going to mark this one by two so that I have a little bit of a reveal. And that reveal is going to be the width of the one by two on both ends. We can just mark it so I know where to cut. It's flush with this end, and I have it clamped down at the other end. I should, theoretically, I should be able to repeat that, so the piece is going to span the back. That piece is also flush. The next step is to create some stringers that will go between these two long pieces that I just cut. That way I'll have support going across front to back and I'll hold everything in a nice straight line. I'll put one on this end, one on the far end, and then probably two in the middle. I'm only marking the front corners for, for the front end, edge of the table because on the back, we're actually gonna have some things clamped to the, this back edge. I've got a couple of like desktop uh, plugs that have like, two AC outlets, two USBs on each of them. I'm gonna have a monitor stand that clamps to the back of this as well. So I'm gonna leave a little bit more of a reveal so that those clamps can fit on here without interfering with this back rail. fits right in. Once I glue it in place and also screw it down, it should be plenty of support for the, the countertop. This is another good opportunity to use my Craig jig. I'll be able to put some pocket screws in to hold this in place while that glue dries. I want this setup to be really strong, so I've got some wood glue. It's a Type On 3. I've used it for a number of projects in the past. I'm going to bead down. I'm putting it on both the wide surface of the one by two and the narrow surface. Now that I've glued that down, I have plenty of room for my monitor stand and the ability to put the maple trim piece on the edge and still have all the clearance that I need. I 
can repeat this process now with this last piece of maple that I have. Now make sure that I have all of my pieces the same way. reveal. One of the nice things about this Craig jig is we can even put the lumber in vertically so we can get two screws get two screws into the edge of that. It'll create a nice square join for us. I've drilled four holes into each of the support beams that will go front to back. I also want to drill some holes into these rails that are going to be the actual front and back rails. I'm going to mark the crown so that I know which way it should go up with a little arrow here. And it also happens to be the same side that, that sticker is on. I want that all the holes to be on the side that's not marred by the stickers. I've done that for each of the front and back rails. I'll measure out, it's just under six feet. I'll measure out so that I have space for six screws across the span. All right, the frame is complete. The table legs that I've chosen to use for our new kitchen table are made by a company called ITC. They're a RV and marine company. And the legs come in three pieces. The top piece, which connects to the table, and it just snaps on and off. So it'll make getting the table on and off pretty easy. Uh, th this particular model is a Redwood. They have two other models. One is a Sequoia. I don't remember what the third one is, but they all kind of install similarly, uh, but they operate differently. 
So this one has a secure spring clamp that holds that on. And then the bottom side is kind of a T-nut that you can unscrew and this base stays on the floor. And this T-screw allows you to tighten it in there and it's really rock solid. There's six screws on the base, six screws on the table side. I'm actually gonna be installing four of these onto my table in the corners so that it's nice and stable, which is why I had to put a band around with the one by twos. So I am gonna use a depth gauge on my drill so I don't drill through my brand new countertop. And I'm gonna be using three quarter inch by number 10 screws to install these. We'll get started. Again, I'm going to be using flathead wood screws, number 10 by 3 quarters of an inch. I think those six screws should hold that on pretty well. I'm just going to repeat the process on all four corners now. Well, that's the bottom of the tabletop. Four nice table legs, some good bracing, all glued in place, glued and screwed. Should be strong enough to stay together on the road. Secure the table legs down. I'm using a number 10 by inch and a half Phillips screwdriver or screw. And I want to try to make the legs as level as possible, as plumb as possible, so that it's nice and square. Plenty of room. I'm sitting at the table. The back of the chair is not going to fall off the edge of the slide. So that's the new tabletop. And what that is allows us to do is we have enough space over here that we'll be able to get a new couch that's wider so that the three of us will be able to sit on the same couch to watch a movie or whatever. We ordered this countertop from Home Depot. Uh, it's just a standard kind of countertop. We get a quarter inch round over on the front. It's unfinished on the back, but you can't see that. And they had a local builder, a local countertop manufacturer, make this for us. We chose to get one that was 22 inches deep and 72 inches long so that we have enough space for. Three people in a little bit of elbow room. 
overall, I think it looks really good. And we'll, you know, it'd be nice to have a little more space when we're heating the original table that was in here. A little bit tight. So, I think it looks good. Thanks for tuning in to this part of our remodel. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and click that subscribe button so you can see us finish the remodel next week when we bring in the new couch. My name's Todd from the Alcohol Free RV, where we have mods, repairs, and adventures along the way. See you next time.